Hi everyone, um, this is Kylie here from Sam Altoona. I figured I'd just got, get it started, the Facebook Live. Um, so what you're seeing on your screen right now is a basic set of notes that I made for today's art lesson. Um, you don't have to write this down or anything, it's just there so as we gain people, they'll get to see it, okay? Um, let me get the comments open, that way in case you guys have any questions or anything, that should hopefully help me out. I think. Sorry. Um, but I hope you guys are all doing well. Again, ba what you're seeing on your screen is a set of notes. Um, they're just basic notes about what today's lesson is going to be about. Um, I'll start talking about it here once we gain a little bit more followers. Um, and I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, I think it's been a pretty good Tuesday so far. Um, I hope it's been a good Tuesday for you guys as well. Um, there we go. I'm starting to see some people pop in. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, I think I have them up for me to view. Uh, so basically, I guess we could probably get started here. Um, and as we go, like, as people join in, feel free to ask questions, that's fine. Um, so basically, what we're going to go over is a little bit of color theory, not too much, just a little tiny touch. And we're also going to talk about the artist Wassily Kandinsky. Uh, he was alive from 1866 to 1944. Um, he's a Russian painter and an art theorist. So essentially what an art theorist is, oh, hi, Jess. Um, he is, basically what an art theorist is, um, they look and theorize about art, how others theorize about gravity. And it's really cool. So they treat it like it's just a part of nature. And I think that's amazing. Um, he's also considered the father of abstract art because he's one of the first known artists to create art, like abstract art. Um, and basically, what abstract art is, um, it, is it is art that doesn't represent what is physically there, and it also aims to create some sort of emotion through shapes, colors, forms, and gestural marks um, to have an effect on its audience. What we're going to review today is um, a little bit of something similar to his color study, squares with concentric circles. Um, he made that in 1913. I wish I had a picture I could bring up for you. Unfortunately, I don't have a printer at my house. <laughs> so basically, we're going to make our names similar to how he did his concentric circle studies, uh, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to flip the page here and go toward to an example. I did it a few different ways. You can do it however you want. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make some basic squares and then we're gonna write our names in it. And this is one way I did it. I liked it okay. And you can pick whatever colors you want. You can pick your favorite colors. You can pick colors that, um, that are like primary colors. Um, you can also pick complementary colors. Uh, this was another example I had. So those are, some ways you can do it. And again, if you don't feel like doing your name, you could also do random shapes in there and just continuously go over them. I'm gonna flip to the notes again. So what we're gonna explain out here are primary colors and the color wheel a little bit. So primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. And then you mix them to get your secondary and tertiary colors. Um, right here, I just have primary and secondary colors example. So you have your red, yellow, and blue and then you have your orange, green, and purple. So if you mix yellow and blue together, you get green. You mix red and blue together, you get purple. And you mix yellow and red together, you get orange. It's pretty cool. And another thing I'm gonna touch on are complementary colors. So you have yellow and purple on opposite sides of the color wheel. So basically, when they're mixed together, they should create a neutral tone or a dark tone, they can create grays to almost black colors. Um, so that's basically how that goes. So with blue, your complementary color is orange, and then with red, your complementary color is green. 
So that is just some basic start out. I'm gonna flip to a blank page and we'll get started here, okay? So the way I go about making the squares, you can use a ruler if you wanna be exact. I actually just use a spare piece of paper. Um, this was one of the pieces of paper I used to try to make the color study on. I made the circle a little weird. So what I do is I use the flat edge of the paper and then I go through and I just make the square as big as I want to. So I just wanna make a little tiny square. If you wanna make huge squares, you can. Um, the sky's the limit. Feel free to do however you would like to. And so I'm gonna work on making a few squares. I'm just gonna make my name again, I think. And again, if you wanna do shapes, you can do shapes if you're not a huge fan or if you have like an insanely long name and you don't wanna do the whole thing. Um, or like you could do triangles, you could do other squares inside squares, you could do circles just like Wassily did. Sky's the limit. So I'm gonna do a weird layout, I think, cause I did a vertical and I did a crisscross pattern. So today what we're gonna use, by the way, are pencil, eraser, and we're also gonna use markers. I have some Copic markers I'm gonna use, but you can use Sharpies, you can use friction, you can use whatever markers you have on hand. If you wanna use colored pencils cause they're something you like better, feel free to use those instead. You can use whatever art supplies to create this and it's gonna be cool to see the outcome. So whatever you guys do, feel free to post it in the comments later. So what I'm doing right now is just making my general squares. Again, I'm just using the side of the paper and I'm making the squares the size I want them to be. I'm doing a weird stacked style right now. So basically, my name's Kylie, so it's K-Y-L-E-A. So I'm going to have five squares. Uh, you want one square per letter. Um, if you don't want to use your name, feel free to make as many squares as you want and just put different shapes in them. So that's basically how I do. Um, if I want to try to make the squares match up with the page outline, I kind of eyeball it. So I look at the edge of the pa page that I'm using, the scrap paper, and I look at the edge of my sketchbook, sorry, and see if it looks even, and then that's how I go about that. Um, if you just have a piece of paper on table, you should be able to use both edges of the paper, and it should work out about the same. And I'm just using a basic mechanical pencil. You can use whatever kind of pencil you need to use to do this. Because it's not too heavily important, um, like what kind of pencil you use. And then what I'm going to do, this is just my own preference. I'm just going to go through and draw with a fine tipped marker um, the squares with a black ink. That's just because I like to do that. If you don't feel like doing that, you don't have to. Or you can outline them in a different color if you like, however you like to do that. Sorry, this is like, I like this part and it's really great for structure, but at the same time, I feel like this part takes the longest because the other part is my favorite part, which is putting the colors on. Um, you, if you guys have a favorite part that you like to use, like if you like drawing things out first, or if you like the coloring part of things, put that in the comments. Like, let us know what you like better. There we go. And I'm almost done. And it doesn't have to be perfect. These are just basic studies. Um, and you can always go back through and redo this later if you'd like and make it a little bit nicer if you want. If you wanna make a sign for your door or you wanna put it on, I don't know, like a lunchbox, put it on your laptop, sky's the limit with that. As long as your parents are okay with it too. Um, I just like throwing stuff everywhere, I guess. I like to put stickers on a lot of different things. There we go. And then I'm just gonna use the eraser one more time really quick because the type of marker I use, it picks up graphite um, and it kind of makes my thing look a little bit gross. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. I'm only using a little bit of the paper right now because um, if I wanted to make something extra, I could make it down here. Or if you wanted to do a vertical layout, you could just keep going down. You can also make it horizontal or sideways. So 
either way would work. There we go. And then what I like to do is I like to pick out different colors. Um, I generally like to go with my favorite colors. I don't know about you guys, um, but my favorite colors are blues and greens. So I'm probably gonna use these two colors first. Um, I also wanna try to use some complementary colors just to see how the colors react as I put them down. Um, so I'm probably gonna do a purple and a yellow because I do love purple and I also love yellow. So I'll use these two. And then um, we'll start out with those and then keep going. I'm probably gonna throw some like just flat out green in there too because I do really like green as well. Um, so I'm gonna start out with my name and what I'm gonna do is in the middle of the square, I'm just gonna write out my letter. So I'm gonna write out K for Kylie. And you can, like, you don't have to have this perfect because this is going to be a little bit loose and it's supposed to just go around the shape. So it's going to start getting messier as you move out from the middle. And that's what we want to. So we're going to move on to using the other blue. And feel free to use whatever colors you guys have. Like, if you don't have these colors, use some reds, use some oranges. You could even use black and white. Um, well, black and just use the paper as white. Sky's the limit on that. So I'm just going through and tracing out my name. And basically, this is my favorite part because you can kind of go a little messier too because you just want to kind of see how the colors react to each other and what makes what colors pop more and what makes them pop less. It's a little bit of an experiment um, to get to know, you know, colors. Um, I think it's always pretty interesting whenever you get to watch how a color reacts to something because sometimes, even though you might have a good understanding of color, sometimes it might not react the way you want it to. And I always think those are some of the funner parts of art because you always get to learn something new every time you do it. So that's that. I'm gonna use a really dark color with this too because I wanna see how it pops with everything else. And so I'm just using different shades of blues and greens here on this first letter. And I'm just trying to stick within the same color family because I wanna see um, how they look and if they have like a harmonious feel that can help and if it's a little bit messy that's fine because we actually kind of want messy that's the effect that you kind of want to go for with this and say you have really light colors in the middle like i do right here feel free to go back in with a different color so this is really light and doesn't really pop so i'm just going to go back through with this dark color and write the k again in the middle and see how that works. And then I, these mark, the markers I'm using kind of eat through each other. So you can actually go through with the light color again, and it might help once it dries to open it up. But depending on what markers you use, every type of a little bit differently. So Sharpies, they're pretty, I have a hard time blending those. I'm actually really bad with Sharpies, but I see some people that can make some amazing art with them, and I think it's amazing. And I'm kind of jealous, because I wish I could do that too. There we go. So we'll go with that. I'm going to... I think I might grab another color too, because I actually want that to pop out a little bit more. So... Let's see. I'm not sure what color I want to go with. Let's go with... Actually, let's just try the purple out. Why not? I just like to experiment with this too, because then you get to figure out some color palettes. Like if you wanna, if you wanna make something with specific colors and you keep this, you'll be able to know what colors go together and look better or pop each other out. And it'll make it easier for you in the future. There we go. And I'm just trying to overlap the colors a little bit too, just to see how they react to each other and kind of to blend it in a little bit. I think that's kind of fun to do. And I really enjoy that. Also, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, that's fine. Like, 
don't be afraid to. But, like, and I'll try my best to answer whatever questions you have. There you go. Let's try. I'm going to go back in with the blue. Just because I want to see that, that darker bluish green color didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to go back in and around. There you go. That's actually kind of looking a little bit cool. Um, so I'm going to actually, I think I'll pop into this color. I really enjoy this color. It's the weird teal color that I have. And as I'm going out for this one, I'm just kind of trying to make each, each version of the color a little bigger than the last, just because I think that's fun to do. Um, you don't have to do that. If you really like tight color arrangements around your letters, feel free to do that. Um, I also, I'm not aiming for an even flow of the color. I kind of want to see how the color looks with a little bit of mark making. And that's because I always find that really fun. That's just me. I'm going to go back in with the purple on top of this coral, like, sea color, I think is what it's called. And see how that goes. Because I really like these two colors together. Alright. And then I'm going to move on. I think I'm going to do one more color in there. I'm going to move on then after this to my next letter. And I think that one I'm going to try to make really quick, easy passes. And I think I'm only going to limit it to two colors. That's what I'd like to do. Um, I think that's kind of cool. Alright, so I'm going to skip over to the next letter, which is the Y. I think for this one, I'm going to use reds and yellows, actually. So, I'm going to start out with yellow on the inside and move out to red. Um, these are warm colors, so it's really cool to see how they react to them too, to each other, too. I always like warm colors a lot because they kind of make you feel a little bit cozier almost inside. So for this one again, I'm going for a tighter color control. There you go. Just to see how it goes. And I also want to see, like, I think it'll have almost kind of like a, I want to, I want to say kind of like a 70s effect where you saw a lot of 70s art with all of the different colors of the rainbow going out. And that's kind of what I want to go for the, for this Y. If you get a little bit outside the lines, that's fine. Like, no worries on that. As long as this is fun for you to do, that's the biggest thing, too. There we go. Alrighty. I really like this, actually, so far. Which is surprising, because sometimes I'm not the biggest... I love red, but at the same time, sometimes I'm not the hugest fan of red. Um, I just think sometimes it's a really powerful color, and I never know how to match it. And again, I like blues and greens. They're, they're my comfort colors. They're really cozy. Um, well, I want to say more so peaceful. Yeah, if you guys want, feel free to let me know what your favorite colors are in the comments. It's pretty cool to figure out each other's different colors that they like. There we go. Yeah, I really like that. It almost looks like a puddle of red and yellow. I think the next colors I want to use, I'm not sure. Um... I th think I might go for, like, some reds and pinks down here. And 
And it's also really cool to do this because you get to see how the colors react. So this one, ooh, oh, that's pretty cool. Pink, blue, and purples are pretty cool. Like, do you like those mixed together, Laura? Or do you like them separated? It kind of reminds me of a galaxy. There we go. So there's that. Also, you might notice that I draw on my hands all the time. It's probably not the best habit to get into. Um, so, go warn you about that. Blues, teals, and greens are also my favorite. They're the best colors. They're just so, they're so calming, but also they can be really energized depending on what kind of blue, teal, and green you look at. There we go. And a big reason I wanted to do this was because I wanted to see how these three colors would react with these three colors. I almost like the Y better. I think it's really cool. So next color, I think I said I was gonna do yeah, I think I might do a, well, actually, no, I'll stick with pink. I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some raspberry. So I'm going to see about these two colors and see how they go together. Sorry, I'm not really focusing on the names on those. Hmm, actually, let's start. I want to do one light color in that. I always like to do lights and darks just because I like to see how they turn out together. Yeah, so I'm going to see... How this L turns out. I feel like I'm gonna look back at these and notice like each time I've done this it's gonna be a different like different colors of the same colors and the same letters. I can never tell if I do that or not but if I do it's pretty cool. So Whenever we're done here, make sure to post what ha like what you guys turned out with in the comments below. It's going to be really fun to see everyone's different pictures they made. I really like to see how everyone gets to implement everything in a different way. There we go. So, I wanted to see how these three colors reacted together. They're pretty much in the same color family. They're this like reddish, pinkish, purplish color tone. I really enjoy that. And I wanted to see if they would end up doing something similar to what the Y did. I like how when you look at stuff like this, it almost makes makes it feel like it's moving in or out away from you. It's kind of like an optical illusion almost. There you go. And feel free to go back into what you've made and keep doing adjustments to it too. Like, I I like to experiment with that sometimes and see if it'll make a big difference or not. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And if it turns out different than what you expected, that's always okay. Like, you need a little bit of happy accents, kind of like how Bob Ross talks about. Because if you don't have those, then what do you have? No, he is. Uh, does anyone else out there like Bob Ross a lot? I I surprisingly like him a ton. I used to, like I used to not watch his stuff whenever I was younger, but in college I got really into him. There you go. I kind of like how that does this weird stepped effect effect. And then just make sure to go out all the way out to the outside of your square. That's a big thing of it. And if you actually use the wrong color compared to what you wanted to use, like there's no right or wrongs really in this, um, that's okay. It'll still turn out pretty cool and it might give it a different effect too. And there we go. I kind of like how that one turned out. Yes, Bob Ross is the best. Okay. He's just so calm and nice. And he just, if you ever look up who he is as a person, he is honestly just such a sweetheart. 
there we go. Um, and then I don't know what colors I want to use. I think I want to use green and yellow, but like a different yellow. I, I don't think I want to go with that dark of a yellow. I think I might, let me see if I have a lighter yellow. Yeah, I'm going to do some greens and yellows, I think, together. <laughs> Maybe not that one. Sorry. I'm just, I have my marker bag right beside me, so that's why I keep popping and not talking for a minute. I have this habit, I really like to go from light to dark, but if you guys go for, I'm going to try to go from dark to light, I think, on the E, just because I want to see how it goes. I like to use about two different colors or three different colors with these, but, oh, actually, you know what, I should actually use, I should actually just do green, yellow, blue, and red on this one. Oh, I agree with you on that one, Laura. I agree very heavily with this. Practice doesn't make perfect, but it definitely helps you progress. And if you have fails, that helps you progress even more as well. Um, because without failing at doing something, you don't actually learn what you, what you need to. And sometimes you don't know what you do, like are doing wrong. And so it helps you get to where you know what you're doing right, eventually. I hope that made sense. There we go. I'm gonna try this out. I don't know how it's gonna react. I was originally gonna do green and yellows on this one, but I decided to just kind of use all the colors. Well, not all of them, but I'm using green, blue, yellow, and red on this one because I wanna see how it goes. I always find the E so weird because it makes this really bizarre shape because it's kind of like an L but then it makes um an even bigger like it's, it's like an L with a little bump in the middle kind of like a camel camel L I guess there we go so I'm actually going to do yellow and then go back to go to red because I want to see what kind of color effect it has also, I think I just kind of like yellow. Like, whenever I'm making art, I actually really like using yellow a lot. Um, I don't know what it is about this color. It's a very light yellow that I picked. I forgot how pale this one was. And if you guys are using, like, other materials, that's pretty cool. I would love to see, like, what everyone else is using. There you go. And as you go out, if the shape gets kind of weird compared to what it was on the inside, that's actually perfect because it'll start making those kind of bizarre shapes that you can't really tell what they are. And that's kind of the effect we're going for today. Oops, sorry, that was really loud. I dropped a marker. I might go back in with a, a brighter yellow because as much as I like this one, it's not as... It's not as bright as I wanted it to be. There we go. Ooh, I actually really like that one. It kind of looks like a flag almost to me. Dropped that again. Let's see about this one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go back into this yellow and just try to make it a little bit darker because it's not as dark as I want it to be. And if you go over different colors and don't stay inside your lines, that's perfect. Especially for this kind of a practice. And then you get to see like what it does to the other colors too. And you might turn out with a completely different effect than what you started with. There you go, I think that's pretty cool. So, what next do I want to do? I'm almost at the end of my name. I wonder where you guys are at. Um, I'm trying to debate. So, I have like a bluish purple green. I have reds and yellows. I guess I picked a lot of reds today, um, surprisingly. I, like, I have these pink ones. I have this multicolored one. Um, I kind of want to do... How about we do... 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm having a hard time. I always like, I love picking out colors. Um, but sometimes I, I take forever to decide on things. I wonder if you guys do too. Let's do you know what, I think I might try to do a cool one, like a cool colored one again. So I think I might actually use some deeper blues and lighter blues. So instead of using like tealy blues, I'm gonna use, there we go, and let's do, let's do this one. All right, so I'm going to, I think I'm gonna start with like a light one. Ooh, actually, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think I will do a rainbow one, Angela. Thanks. That was a great idea. 24. Also, if you guys have any questions about anything, feel free to let me know. Um, I know this is this one's a pretty fun one to do because you just get a ton of freedom. So I'm actually going to start with red ones. <laughs> I have that in common. I always take forever to decide on things. And... I'm trying to not take forever today, so like I'm rushing through a little bit more, but sometimes when I'm picking out colors especially, it just takes me like 20 years. I'm really bad when I go out to eat. I make other people go ahead of me and then do it next. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do a rainbow box in this one. Um, so I'm going, so it's red, yellow, orange. So we'll do yellow next. And then it's green, blue, purple. Sorry, I feel like I'm trying to do math in my head. I almost forgot like which order the rainbow goes in. Roy G. Biv. There we go. So red, yellow, yeah. Let's see if this orange. Yep. Orange. Sometimes I think when I do these, I do these a little too structured. Because you should let them be a little bit looser than what I'm doing. But at the same time, I always like a lot of structure in things. Unless it's splatter paint. I actually have a lot of fun with splatter paint. So green so let's pick a good green oh i dropped my green well i think this one's good sorry i have a ton of markers i'm not gonna lie whoops i mixed up the yellow and the orange green I like that though. There we go. So did you guys pick specific colors that you wanted to use already? Or did you kind of come in and do the same thing I did and start just start with whatever you wanted? Fun fact, this is random, but um, blue light is actually, I think, the brightest kind of light if you're looking at stars. Sorry guys, I'm right beside the fire hall. If I knew how to mute it, I probably would. sorry about that guys I that does not go off very often surprisingly and so I kind of assumed we would probably be safe today that was my bad um but yeah so I made a rainbow one roughly that's pretty cool I like that um I actually mixed up my colors but 
Um, let me know in the comments below whenever you guys are done how you guys did. I think this is pretty cool. Um, again, you can do pretty much anything with these. Um, if you wanted to do some basic, uh, some basic circles, you probably could too. I'm going to actually do one really quick down below. That way you guys can test it out. And like some chill circles, not like anything crazy. And feel free to cut these out and tape them somewhere. Um, you should be able to hit in the comments, there should be an image box and you should be able to send that. If you can't send it now, you can always send it after you're um, done, like after we're done here and out of the live because that might, it might just be something while you're in live, it doesn't let you do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do a basic shape in here. I hope that answered your question well enough. Um, if it did, let me know. If not, I can try to explain it better. I don't know where I put it. I sent my things. I see, I just kind of threw it over there. So I'm going to do just a random circle one just to see how it goes. And that way you, you guys have an example of what a shape looks like. Oh, yeah, so, nope, not that one. Yeah, I think the way I see it, it just lets me type in a comment. Um, for right now, so you might be able to do it um, after we're done with the video and then just hit comment again. Um, and there should be like, whenever you do the comment, there should be like this little square that has some mountains in it. And that is basically um, supposed to copy an image. So I'm going to start with some purples. And again, this one I'm just doing loose and messy because this is kind of similar to how Wassily did it. So we're going to do that. I'm going to stick with purples, reds. No, you're not typing too much. I actually really love the interaction. Yeah, feel free to comment as much as you want. So there's that. Let's do orange in between. I actually really like how this one looks. Yeah. And I think I'm going to do a little. And again, if you go outside the lines, that's fine. That's perfect how you do. There we go. And then I'm going to do a bright yellow. And I think this one will be done. I always like pairing purple with the weirdest colors. There we go. Also, if like you can't find um, where to post your video in the comments, feel free to share them to our page. Th like, that's fine as well. Whatever works easiest for you guys. And we're gonna try to post this kind of stuff to YouTube. Again, sorry about the fire hall alarm, but there we go. So basically, you got to see how um, Wassily's color studies kind of worked. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate it. I am pretty excited. I like this one, I think, the most so far. I did a few practice ones just to make sure I knew how to talk through this. But thank you, guys. Please make sure to post what you made. Um, and our next one, our next art lesson, I believe it's going to be taught by Neil, Neil Young. Um, that's going to be on April 24th, and it's going to be at 2 again as well. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great day.